OBS Dynamic Mask is back, baby. And that means that we can do this nice little backlighting effect with a free and reliable way. And yes, that means this is the third time three that I have done this tutorial, it's gonna be the one. This is it, it's the last one. Now this tutorial in particular is going to be pretty cut and dry, which means that if there's any confusion about source mirrors or stuff like that, feel free to reference the other two videos that are on this topic. They go into more detail with how those things work. I'm not going into that in this video, we're just replacing the old two methods so that you can have the most reliable, most up-to-date method of getting this backlight effect. For this tutorial, you're going to need a total of five things. Two of them are softwares and the other three numbers are going to be OBS plugins. They are as follows. I'm assuming I'm putting them over there somewhere. You will need VTube Studio or another VTuber software as long as it has some form of transparency and yes that does include chroma keying out from a green screen. You're also going to need OBS. What a surprise. And then the three plugins that you will need are going to be Composite Blur. You will need Exceldro's Source clone and also from Exceldro you will need the shader filter plugin. Assuming you already have the two softwares installed you really only need to add the plugins. For each of these plugins you're going to download and install them basically the same way. Just pull them up on the OBS plugins website and then go ahead and click download and download the appropriate installer depending on your OS. If you are on Windows and you get a little pop-up that asks you if you are okay running the software or the plugin just hit run anyway and it, it should go ahead and install. Okay so let's go ahead and hop into OBS. We're going to start off by doing all of our scenes, get them set up all at once so that we can go through and just do piece by piece. Start by making your stream scene. You're required to have one scene at minimum in OBS, so if you have one already as a placeholder, just leave it empty for now. Then we're going to right click and add, and we're going to add in, this is going to be our all display capture. It's going to capture any game, any program, any Chrome windows, whatever you want in here. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and use these sample images. I have a white background, a black background, and then an actual screenshot of a game. I would highly recommend using an actual screenshot of a game because you can see how the blur is affecting it and really kind of pick and choose how you want it to look. But as far as the black and white backgrounds go, you can also do a right click and add. You can do a color source instead. All of these will be included in my tutorial pack on my coffee page. Up next, I'm going to right click, I'm going to add, and we are going to do our VTuber master list. All of your VTubers are going to go in here. If you have multiple VTubers slash multiple different programs that you use, for me, for the sake of the video, I'm just going to go ahead and throw on my Spout 2 capture. That is good to go. And now I am all good to go in here. The last scene that we're going to add is going to actually be our lighting scene. And in here, we're going to start working the magic, all right? So we're going to right click, we're going to add and add a source clone. We're gonna name this Display Blur. Go ahead and turn off the audio and then we're going to set the clone to our all display capture. So you can see it has replicated the display capture. We can go ahead and hit OK. Looks like this. Great, now we're gonna go ahead and hit filters. We're gonna right click. We're going to add a composite blur. That's one of the plugins that we have added. Go ahead and hit OK. We're going to set this to dual kawase and we're gonna bump it up to like probably like 190. You could do less or more if you want. It's just so that you can get the general idea of the colors that are happening on screen. Once you've got that to your liking, you can go ahead and hit close and it should be looking something like this at this point in time. We can go back to our stream scene. It's empty right now. There's nothing in here. So let's go ahead and add stuff in and we're going to make a source clone. This is going to be our main display and we're going to set this to again all display capture it's just this one is not going to have the blur on it because this is what you're actually going to be showing on stream turn off the audio again because we don't need it unless you do need it we're also going to add our vtuber now so i'm going to right click and i'm going to add yes another source clone i'm going to go back up here we're going to name this vtuber with lighting and we're going to set this to our vtuber master list so now we've got our whole main scene set up. Now we can start working on the lighting. So we're going to click on our VTuber with lighting. We're gonna tap on filters, pull up the filters menu. We're gonna right click, we're gonna add, and we're going to select user defined shader. And then it's gonna open this window that looks a little bit scary. It's totally fine, don't worry, I believe in you. Go ahead and hit load shader from text file. And if you hit browse, it should open this examples folder within your shader filter folder. This is the address. If you, for some reason, don't have access to this, this is where it should be stored. If it's not stored there, it's not installed correctly or you're missing these and you can add them in manually if you want. 
Nonetheless, we're gonna scroll down and we are going to look for the dynamic mask shader. I'm gonna go ahead and select that one. And now we're going to set the input source to our blur. So our display blur. We're gonna go down and all of the base values we're going to set to 0.2 and each corresponding input value for each color channel, we're going to also set to the value two. So for example, for the red channel, we're going to do base value 0.2. And then for the red input value, we're gonna set that to two. Everything else leave alone. Then we move on, green channel, 0.2. Green input, we're gonna set to two. And then lastly, we've got the blue channel, we're gonna set this to 0.2. And the blue input channel, we're gonna set to two. So you can already see the model is now tinted blue with the background color, so that's great. Now up next, we're actually going to have to close this out and we are going to go back down here to our lighting scene and we're going to add in the shadow like the rim light effect so go ahead and hit right click add and we're going to do another source clone we're going to name this vtuber shadow set this to your vtuber master list again turn off the audio again and we are going to go ahead and tap on filters for this we're going to right click and add we're going to do a color correction on this and we're going to pull the brightness all the way down to black so that it's completely blacked out and we're going to do another filter add we're going to add a blur or actually in this video i'm using composite blur so let's do composite blur and you can set it to gaussian and you don't really need a lot just enough to give that blurred edge effect so that's probably good something around six or seven and now it'll look like this we also are going to have to shift this down and to the right basically just shift it away from where the light's coming from because that's where the shadow is going to be cast on your body so you just bump this down into the right or down into the left whichever one you prefer now we can go back to our stream scene we can go back to our vtuber with lighting and we can open up the filters again and now we're going to add a second user defined shader so right click add user defined shader again name it whatever and then we're going to do the same thing, load shader text from file, browse, and we're going to pull up dynamic mask shader, scroll down, and we're going to set the input source for this one to the actual lighting scene. This is going to add the rim light. And now for this one, we can leave the base values at one, but we're going to set the corresponding color channels to five. So for the red channel, we're going to set this to five. For the green channel, we're going to set green to five. And then lastly, for the blue channel, we're going to set the blue input to five. And you can see we have the nice little rim light effect going on now. And it's pretty much identical to the one that I'm wearing in the bottom right as well. Now we can go ahead and hit close and the effect is basically done. However, there is one downside. You might be thinking, but wait, Flux, if I set it to a white background and I go back to the scene, it looks like a flashbang went off. And yes, you're correct. It looks terrible. So how do we fix that? You might be thinking, oh, I know a solution. I'm just gonna go into the lighting scene and I'm gonna pull up the display blur, add something like a color correction filter, and I'm just gonna bump the brightness down, right? The problem with that is that sure, you go back and it doesn't look as washed out anymore. But the downside is that when you go back to the display capture and you turn the game back on, the game lighting has also lost all of its color. So what you really need to do is be able to turn all of the brights down but leave everything else the same so we're gonna do a LUT and the good news is that I'm giving it to you for free it's in my coffee page if you would like to use this LUT we're gonna go back to our lighting scene go to display blur and go to filters and instead of doing the color correction bullshit we're going to right click add and we're going to apply a LUT this is going to be where you put in your .cube file. <laughs> Sorry for the stupid file names. I'm gonna give you guys two copies of these cube files. One of them's gonna be a strong one that's really gonna knock down anything bright like past a mid-level. And then the weaker one is really only gonna be bright white colors. Anything that's really, really bright, like for example, in this situation, if you actually look at the, the scene itself, the moon is really bright. It's like white, okay? So what happens is, in the lighting scene, it's actually getting rid of that super bright area. You can see if we go to our all display capture now and set it back to white, if we go to the stream scene, we are no longer washed out in the white because it's removing all of that white light. And that's all there is to it. Good luck with all of your streaming endeavors. Hopefully the video helped you and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Follow my social media.